Well, hello and welcome to another um, Claire McCalling. Um, the other day I, I met a monk. Um, could tell he was a monk because of what he was wearing. And, and, and during the conversation, I said to him, you know, why do you guys dress like that? And he said to me, well, it's just a habit. Okay, sorry, not up maybe to the standard of my usual wit and repartee, but hey-ho, I was wanting to speak about habits to, today and to say I'm getting one. Mm. Now, the church, as we've been saying and underlining through, throughout um, this time, is about making disciples. That's our calling and our being. Uh, the goal really is to, to move folks who maybe don't believe into believing and then serving and giving glory to God through that. It's, as I read once uh, in someone's book, it's about turning atheists into missionaries. It might not be that you have to start as far back as everyone who's an atheist. Some folks you know might believe in God, just not be very sure of the God that they do believe in or, or what. Um, but, but it's moving folks from a place of unbelief or not trusting or not knowing God through experiencing God and serving Christ and being, being established in Him and ministering to Him and, and for Him. And as we kind of seek to move and move ourselves along that journey and move others, so as well as that movement, there's a kind of woven in and through it different rhythms of life, different, different habits. We, we have them in, in life itself. There's the different seasons of the year. Um, Billy Connolly says there's only two in Scotland, June and winter, but uh, I think we're more used to looking at it that there's four different seasons. There's, there's different rhythms in our, our monthly lives. For some people, the monthly rhythm, rhythm is great. At the end of the month, I get paid. Um, during lockdown, we've been celebrating communion. On the first Sunday of the month, there's a, a monthly rhythm there. That we have rhythms through the week. The weekend comes and the pace is different for summer, so on. There's daily rhythms with, with meal times. And in all of these things, there's a number of routines, things that shape us. Some of the routines are given to us. We have to go to work at a certain time. Um, or maybe there's medication that we have to take on certain days or at certain times of the day. And then there's other routines that we have that we choose. Uh, maybe sitting down to watch a particular TV program at a certain time and stage of the day or the week. Um, maybe with with meal times, I um, when I was um, an assistant warden in a <coughs> student house, there were a couple of guys there, were brothers. Um, who for some reason had to, had to um, always be um, kept together in terms of where they stayed. And they continued the practice of, which had been there all their lives, of having the same meal on each day of the week. You know, so like Mondays it was fish fingers, Tuesdays it was gammon steak, um, Wednesdays it was chicken Kiev. You know, that, that was what they'd done all their lives and they continued that. That was their routine. Um, they liked that. They found that, I don't know, comforting. I suppose in a way it was quite comforting. I might go into the kitchen sometimes and see them there and think, ah, great, steak pie. It must be Thursday. I thought it was Thursday. Uh, we have different routines. And we choose these routines and we, we make them habits. And we can choose routines and, and have habits that help us to grow in Christ and to grow Christ in us. A discipleship's about a relationship. Now, I was at an online seminar yesterday and then was reminded that there are habits that I need to do, need to take up again. And I've made a note to do that. Why do I have to do it again? Because good intentions leak. Aspirations leak. That's the story of the vast majority of good uh, New Year resolutions uh, that people have made for however long. You aspire to do this, but, but it leaks. The intention weakens, and by February, most of them have gone up in smoke. And routines and, and habits are not necessarily dull things. I think my routine of um, setting aside time to watch Would I Lie to You every week is, is not the least bit dull. I, I love it. 
Choosing routines to give shape, to give form, to give meaning is a way of helping us to keep on our toes, to stay fit, to stay fit for life. Meals do that. For some exercise does that. And, and so too with our Christian lives. And so our, our series through Lent is about holy habits in following Jesus. It's about how we pick up things that, that regularly in our routines mean that we're following Him, staying close to Him, and His life is living with us. It's about how we move on in discipleship through different rhythms and, and routines, some of which might be daily, some weekly, some monthly, some annually, and whatever. Learning habits can be a good thing. It's a good thing for a pilot to have certain habits that they check this and that and the next thing before they take off. You would much rather be in, in a plane where a pilot has those good habits than one who doesn't have those kind of good habits. His habits can be good. They're never a good look on monks or anyone else, but other habits are, I think, very good. So I want to encourage you to think about joining a focus group. If, you, if you're at all interested or if there's more information that we can give you, contact myself or contact Martin Russell. Um, contact details for myself and, and Martin are on the screen here. Do get in touch because habits can be good for us. They can be richly rewarding. And they can move us on in the calling and the purpose of being on that journey of growing in discipleship and growing more like Jesus. Now, that growth into Jesus has a different place of beginning for, for different people. Um, for me, it, um, it started with um, a scripture union group in, in Stonehaven when I was in my um, early teens, um, and I've always been um, grateful to uh, the ministry of, of Scripture Union um, for that, even though I didn't, um, I, we, we moved house soon after and I didn't stay involved with um, Scripture Union, and, and, but I've always been um, keen that uh, we can support their work in whatever, whatever ways we can, and they're still doing a great job in making Jesus known to folk and encouraging um, uh, youngsters to, to grow in faith. Um, and the Scripture Union have a worker in uh, Lanarkshire, Valerie Sim, and she's been able to join us at Claremont a couple of times before now. But Valerie, of course, can't be out and about in the same way. But here's Valerie going to give us an update of what she's up to and her hopes for um, SU's work in, in uh, time to come as well. Valerie. Hello. My name's Valerie Sim. I work for Scripture Union Scotland as the regional worker for Lanarkshire. Last March, like many of us, I imagine, we felt as if the rug had been pulled out from under our feet. Our Easter and then summer camps were cancelled. Our issue groups and work in schools was brought to an abrupt stop. But while we were taken aback by what had happened, we know that nothing comes as a surprise to God. And he says in Isaiah 46.10, My purpose will stand and I will do all that I please. So while our plans were cancelled, we knew God's desire to draw children and young people to himself remained unchanged. And we had to trust and not be discouraged. It's our experience that God often opens doors in places we wouldn't expect or in ways we wouldn't have imagined. And so we prayed and we sought his leading and steps were taken to find new ways to help children and young people explore the Bible and respond to the significance of Jesus. Although 300 children and young people had their Easter camp cancelled, over 600 watched SU TV, an online alternative to camp which took place each day over the Easter holidays. Our equip events for senior pupils in Glasgow and Edinburgh were moved online. This enabled young people to have fun together and have good Bible teaching. And we also made them fortnightly events, which was really helpful at a time when their normal events and support networks were not functioning. Over the summer, many camp teams ran Zoom events. And you might have heard of Wonderzone or Scotland's biggest holiday club. 
where 100 children signed up to our Zoom event and over 100 churches, not just in Scotland, also used the material to be their summer holiday club event. Magnitude, the festival that would have taken place at our Lendrick Muir Centre went online and was attended by over a thousand young people and youth leaders. Then in August, schools went back. Now, after the original proposals of blended learning, we had really prayed as a Lanarkshire prayer group that all pupils would be able to go back to school in person for the sake of their well-being, and we were delighted when that prayer was answered. But life was still far from normal. We had to look at what we wanted to do over the autumn and rethink how that might take place. More events were moved online. Go Conference is one of our key events for discipleship. It helps older teenagers learn to own their faith and how to live it out. And we weren't sure how a weekend would work as an online event. But as it happened, it was way better than we had even hoped for. The young people who came on were fantastic and their commitment, their engagement throughout the weekend and their evident desire to grow in faith was great to see. At SU Scotland, we're keen to help young people grow in faith and learn to listen and respond to how God might be calling them to serve. Leading SU groups is one of the ways senior pupils might share their faith at school and we support them and train them for this. These training events also moved online enabling us to meet up with young people all over Scotland and equip them to lead their own SU group in their high school when they were able to start up again. When schools opened in the autumn, not many were ready to invite visitors in, but some asked for virtual resources to use at assemblies. And I had some really moving emails from head teachers saying just how much they valued the input that we could give them and how needed it was at times like these. However, the really good news for me is, is that I was able to go into primary schools between the summer and Christmas to work with children. Working with just one school at a time, following the government guidelines, but being able to explore the Bible with children and deal with the big questions they have is so important. I teach the Bible Alive programme, which teaches the whole story of the Bible and lets the children see the bigger plan that God shows through the Bible. Teaching what Christians believe through music, drama, quizzes, storytelling and British Sign Language means the lessons are engaging, they're involving and they're interactive. It means the children hear the message in a way that they understand and can respond to and they love to take part. There's no better way to start the day than to hear the excitement when you arrive at school and the cry goes up, it's Bible alive. As I finish, can I ask you to pray with us for the schools and for the children and young people and that we'll be back to in-person ministry in the not too distant future. The young people around us that are growing up in this time of uncertainty need more than ever to hear that God loves them. Things are still difficult and in many ways very different, but it's comforting to know that God is in control and he can do amazing things. If you'd like to find out more about what we're doing in Lanarkshire with SU Scotland, please go to our website suscotland.org dot uk forward slash valerie dash sim if you'd like you can sign up to get some regular updates about lanarkshire there and to support the ministry if you'd like to do that thank you <laughs>